Welcome to the Prepare Like a Pro live chat show. My name is Jack McLean. I'm the host. And today I will be debriefing last week's live interviews, as well as announcing the upcoming guests for our Prepare Like a Pro live chat show for next week. And also debrief our uh, recent interviews that we had on the podcast. All the questions that have been sent through to us either live on Instagram or YouTube during this live segment or during a direct message and email uh, for last week. I'll be answering on this segment and we'll also announce the upcoming guests for the podcast. So those that are dropping on Tuesday and Friday as we do every week, as well as we have two live interviews Tuesday and Thursday night. So let's get straight into it. We've got a debrief with last week's uh, guest, which was Steve Allen on Tuesday. Uh, we discussed uh, his journey in sport as well as um, everything that he did leading up to being a physio working at the West Coast Eagles, Eagles currently. Uh, it was a really fascinating chat and, and one that I recommend whether you're a physio or a developing athlete to, to definitely check in and listen to that podcast. We're actually going to release it next Tuesday. Um, so if you listen to this live, it'll be Tuesday next week. If you're listening in the podcast world, Tuesday the what will that be sixteenth of November, we'll be releasing that podcast. So a great chat. We discussed the importance of travel and listening to your gut. Steve mentioned how after completing his um, high school. And doing some uh, education, he really needed to travel before going straight into elite sport um, and, and had no regrets with that. In fact, it found it was um, really, really important in his development, both um, from a person but also from a professional point of view, getting exposed to um, different ways of doing things. And he mentioned how well it worked out when he came back to Australia. There was a lot of opportunity uh, to work in sport. So I definitely recommend listening in. To that podcast, we discuss the importance of um, caring for the athletes that you work with. Um, Steve mentioned how important that is and how the mentors that he looked up to did that, um, as well as uh, continually making sure that you're um, researching, uh, listening to podcasts and uh, constantly asking questions for those that um, work around you on a specific um, subject rather than just aimlessly researching things um he would be very deliberate in his um self-education so it'd be a specific maybe hamstring um return to play protocol he would um work on uh researching that topic um because it's relevant to his um job that he's got in that current role so he's worked in the olympics um we discussed that and, and preparation with working with hockey athletes uh, and the challenges that that can have with preparing for uh, Olympic uh, competition, um, particularly with the COVID constraints. Um, we talked about working in state league programs and how important they are, um, particularly if you can spend a day a week at Hawth at like your AFL club, if there's an alignment there with the state league team and, and getting that balance between running a program as well as uh, learning by seeing, uh, being like a fly on the wall, so to speak. So. Really good chat. Definitely recommend listening into that interview with Steve Allen, the West Coast Sports Physio. And then last week, we also caught up with Josh Groudon on Thursday night. Josh is the founder and coach at the Kicking Consultant, and we discussed his playing career. He was recruited. He was actually part of the 12 players that were recruited at the GWS Giants uh, at 17 years of age. Um, unfortunately, due to breaking his leg, um, with his three years at GWS Jones, he spent majority of it in rehabilitation um, and he, he discussed the challenges that, that had. However, it got him on the path of, of working on his, um, on his passion. He loved American football um, and he loved um, high-performance sports, strength and conditioning. So after his um, playing career at GWS Giants was uh, finished, he decided to um, take up pro kick program which is a program in Australia that helps uh, athletes that have been delisted from an AFL club to develop their kicking ability for punting in America um, and he got a scholarship there so his hard work paid off scholarship to uh, one of the best colleges in America LSU 
and he was a punter there and was there for four years completing his bachelor's in human movement so really awesome podcast to to listen it's inspiring about how to approach not only the um the downs of of working in elite uh, sport so that the um the challenges that you can have, particularly being in rehab uh, and how tough that can be, particularly long-term rehab um, and how to manage those down times um, as well as look at the growth periods in your life and how you can get better. Uh, and Josh talked about like the challenges of change of direction and handling volume running. Um, realistically, preparing himself to play AFL footy again was going to be really, really tough. So he, he focused on what he could do, which was uh, excel at punting and, and poured all his energy into that. And it really paid off. It set up this new career path he is now on, where he learned uh, heaps about the biomechanics of kicking technique. And he's transferred that now into his business. So he came back to Australia after his four-year stint in America, learned their high-performance program, which is very different, their strength industry philosophy to Australia. We're more medical sports science-based. They're more performance-based. Uh, so they really push the boundaries on how much the body can handle. Uh, and he mentioned how different that was and how it took him about a year to adjust to that philosophy. Um, but he sees a lot of value in that, in improving your physical capacities through pushing the body both mentally and physically. So, um, yeah, great chat for those strength conditioning coaches. Josh is also studying his high-performance sport, so he touched on the importance of strength training to improve your kick uh, for, for distance. Uh, we talked about, for the development footballs, we talked about some drills that you can do to improve your kicking accuracy, both for kicking out, long kicks, short kicks, all the different types of kicks that you can do, as well as, of course, goal kicking. And um, we talked about some of the programs that the, he has um, he, he, as part of his business. So make sure to check out that podcast. It will be released in the next few weeks, and you can um, check out the Kicking Consultant and download their um, programs. They've got programs specific to how to improve your kicking for for wet weather footy um, as well as some strength programs to improve your kicking power so make sure to check check out josh and his work and you can watch the episode on our youtube channel in terms of upcoming live guests we have tim parham the head rehabilitation sports physio at adelaide crows uh, he'll be on tuesday night at 8 30 p.m our Get Better plan will be around creating your own Get Plan plan. So the podcast on Wednesday will be how to – I'll take you through a presentation on the Wednesday podcast on how you can create your own Get Better plan. For those new to Prepare Like a Pro, we have a Get Better plan for every athlete we work with where they have a lifestyle focus. If um, It might be, let's say, improving their sleep quality and then they'll have a physical focus, let's say, improving their, um, their upper body strength so they can uh, – shrug tackles and, and do a strong fend off um, as well as stick their tackles let's say uh, and this is for the individualized coaching package every month we'll reflect on that review what's working what's not and put a make sure we've got a program in place to allow that athlete to to reach their goals and, and get better in, in that space so this presentation uh coming up the podcast on wednesday will be about how you can create your own get better plan and i'll take you through some um, activities that you can do to Build your awareness around the bottleneck of your athlete development, so potentially some things that are um, might be holding you back from playing your best footy from a consistent point of view, as well as uh, what are your strengths, what are the things that stand out from the rest of the competition um, and allow you to play your best footy. We want to make sure we're sharpening um, your strengths as well as working on your weaknesses. So that's on Wednesday. Thursday's live uh, podcast will be with Cameron Falloon, the founder and co-CEO of Body Fit Training. So we'll be discussing uh, not only his career, how he came to create Body Fit Training, but also the three AFL clubs that he worked um, with, which were Geelong Football Club, Western Bulldogs and Port Adelaide. So really looking forward to that chat. Uh, Cam's travelled around the world, worked in England and um, has worked in high performance sports as well as um, now running, he's in the private sector, um, working in one of the most successful businesses in the fitness industry to date. So really looking forward to that chat. You can tune in for that live episode on Thursday at 8.30 p.m. And then our Friday podcast will be with Jared Egan, who worked at Port Adelaide Football Club as a sports science strength conditioning coach, and he's now the head of athlete development and runs the athletics track and field 
program at Sydney Grammar School. So really looking forward to that podcast that will be released on Friday. Uh, at Papelica Pro, we've, we've signed on a couple of clubs now. So Glen Orkey the, in the State League in Tasmania, Corfu Grammarians who are in VAFA A, both their men and women program. And then we're excited to announce we've just signed uh, Upway Tacoma Football Club, both their men's and women's program um, as of this week. So if you're a strength and conditioning coach looking to get some experience, maybe you've um, completed your Bachelor of Sports Science and now you want to, so you've got the knowledge and you want to learn the experience in working in sport, we have uh, four availabilities at the moment, uh, one with the senior women's uh, Glen Orkey team, so if you're Tasmania-based, of course, one with uh, the Corfu Grammarian senior women's team, and then two spots available for Upway as we've just signed with them and I've just um, posted an ad uh, for that. So if you're looking to work with me more closely and you want to learn uh, our philosophy of Prepare Like a Pro and um, and also get some experience working in a football club, make sure to email me at jack at preparelikeapro.com or even if you know of someone that you think would be a good fit, um, email us through. Or you can just direct message us on Instagram. Our power tip for this week was the importance of focusing on not just power and strength training in the gym, but also improving, making sure you're a well-balanced athlete and you've got a... Um, yeah, a balanced approach to your strength and power training. So sometimes we can, especially in the social media uh, world, we can get caught up with the, so to speak, sexy exercises, the fancy exercises like the, the power-based work or lifting really heavy, but we don't want to disregard the importance of single leg stability and strength and control, particularly around your ankle and hip joint and how important they are um, and your posterior chain, so the pulling exercises like chin-ups, bent-over rows, band pull aparts, uh, deadlifting, any hip hinge movements like RDLs. Um, so strengthening the back of the body, the muscles that you don't see in the mirror, but they are the cornerstone of holding our up, both from a posture point of view, trunk stability point of view, uh, and particularly around injury production, uh, injury prevention, um, because the muscles at the front of the body are commonly overutilized with running um, and, and our sitting down posture. Uh, so they can become quite tight and overdeveloped at the front, um, we can exacerbate that in the gym if we only work on those muscle groups. So it's really, really important that you, you're doing just as much work, if not more, to be honest. Like at Propelic Pro, our pulling volume for most of the year will be two times more than our uh, pushing volume. Okay, so that's a good... So if, let's say you do five sets of five on the bench press, we want to make sure we're getting around 50 reps of your band pull apart or 50 reps of your rows, all right, to balance that. Otherwise, we can become quite tight through the front, which is going to affect your overhead marking ability. It's going to affect, affect your ability to pick up um, ground balls potentially or even just your ability to uh, stick tackles and be strong um, with your arms abducted out wide. Um, so really, really important that you're well balanced both from the lower body point of view and upper body. Um, and our power tap for this week is make sure that you're following an athletic program, not an aesthetic program. So don't focus on... Uh, how you look, focus on what's going to improve your performance on game day, which will be strengthening your hamstrings, strengthening your glutes, making sure that you're doing capacity work with your, your calves, your adductors, um, your upper back muscles, um, focus on good alignment, trunk stability, um, and yeah, training in a single leg stance. These are, these are critical. Um, and an analogy we have for you, which will be if you've just improved the engine on your car, we also want to upgrade your brakes and your handling ability, okay? So making sure your brakes is your strength and then your handling ability with your mobility and your agility, all right? So if we're improving your speed, improving your power, make sure we're also getting stronger uh, and we're getting more agile, more mobile. Really, really important when you're uh, looking at an athlete development point of view for AFL football. That's our power tip for the week. Um, controversial topic has been a bit of uh, a healthy debate on the Facebook group page. Uh, the Victorian Athletic page on, on Facebook. I posted um, for a friend that they're looking for a head of a VFLW strength and conditioning program. Um, and it's at, like most jobs working in sport, entry-level jobs working in either state league teams, um, it, it, it doesn't come with a lot of uh, financial reward. This one was for $1,500, which is pretty common. Um, and, yeah, it got a lot of backlash around from, from the strength and conditioning page around how we shouldn't be accepting these roles um, because they're keeping the in, 
you know, they're devaluing our work as transition coaches. Um, and there was a strong response in, in that regard. And then there was the um, other side of the fence, uh, which I'm leaning more towards, which is these jobs are critical for um, gaining experience. Just because you've got a master's degree doesn't mean you know how to apply that knowledge. So we need these entry-level jobs to be able to build the networks uh, in elite sport, which are, which are critical. Uh, I just did my ASCA level three and, and there was reported there that the research shows that 70% of jobs in elite sport come from um, your connections, those that you trust and work with uh, ha or have in the past. Um, so it's pretty important that you start building your networks if you're a strength and conditioning coach or anyone that works in elite sport for that matter, um, as well as your ability to apply the knowledge. So you, um, it's one thing to have the knowledge. It's another thing to be able to apply it. How do we implement the information that we know is um, is really, really important when working with anyone, but particularly working in high-performance sport. So uh, I believe those programs, like speaking only from my exam my um, point of view, they're critical for allowing people that um, haven't got that experience to take on these roles. At the end of the day, if you bump up the budget for a role, you're going to get more experienced coaches apply for that role, uh, and therefore it's going to be more competitive. So um, I feel that if you want to work in elite sport, you need to, you need to put in the time. Um, maybe it's not as much as what you could get in the private sector, but you've got to ask yourself, where do you want to go in five years' time? And I can only speak from my exam, my point of view and my first year at Box Hill Hawks was uh, well, the first half, the second half of the season when I started uh, was for free. And then I, my next contract at the end of the year, I was bumped up to $500. And then I think it was around 2000 then 3000 And then at the end, when I finished my degree, uh, there was a lot, I was lucky enough that there was an opportunity there for a two-year contract uh, and you're on full-time wage. So it certainly worked for me and not that's just the financial side the experience and the knowledge and networks um and uh, you know personal growth that i got from those that i worked with um was far bigger than any uh, other course that i could have done um so you, you're learning along the way and you're getting better in your craft uh, it's obviously something you can't do forever now that I've got a um, young one and a family look after, there's no way I could go back and, and do that type of work for the amount of hours and energy it takes. But I look back at it fondly and with, certainly with no regrets. So if you have any questions or queries and you're a strength and conditioning coach wanting to work in sport and you're not sure what the best thing to do is, feel free to reach out to me either by email, jack at preparelikepro.com, or you can message us on our socials and I'll, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, but yeah, really interested to know what your thoughts are, guys, if you listen to the podcast uh, and you're on that Facebook group. I know a few have messaged me directly and shared their comments. Um, I can I can understand both points of view uh, and it's a really interesting space and one that we um, want to do our best to make sure the industry is growing and getting you know, continual growth for, for the coaches new to the industry, um, as well as those that have been in it for some time. We want to make sure there's there's roles out there for everyone, of course. Um, and that it, that it's fair as well at the end of the day. So really interested to hear your thoughts if you're listening to the podcast world or if you're listening live, me message us and what you think on the topic. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll watch this space. We'll get to the Q&A, guys. So this is a weekly segment that we do every week. I'm going to answer the questions that come through our Instagram. So grab the Instagram mobile now. Right. First question from Tobias Young. Just wondering how long have you been training? Good question, Tobias. I started training. My dad bought me a bench press slash leg extension slash lat pull down attachment. And I believe I was 14 years of age. Uh, and I started training on that. Pretty skinny kid. Definitely needed to bulk up um, to help with my footy. So that's where I was first introduced to weight training. Um, and yeah, 14 years, I'm now 30, what am I, 31, so um, yeah, a good 17 years. Um, uh, the current training that I'm doing, I work at Edge Training, I'm a coach there, and I work, do the program there, so I usually do the program before I coach in the afternoon classes, uh, and then I also love to run. So when I drop off my son at childcare, which is near Albert Park, I just typically go for a run if it's a if it's a good day. Uh, and if it's raining, poor weather, whatever, I use the non-motorized treadmill at, at edge training. 
Clancy Mills, I want to increase my speed. What are some key tips? Uh, great question, Clancy. Well, most important would be to make sure that if it's, I'm assuming running speed, make sure that you sprint at least once a week. Um, and we call them flying efforts where let's say over a hundred meter distance, you have 30 meters to gradually build up your speed. So it's not a hard acceleration. It's just a gradual speed work on your technique, 30 meters. Then you've got a 40 meter window where you work up to whatever the target is for your velocity that day. So let's say it's 80% or 90%. We hit that roughly that speed, whether you've got live GPS to track or you um, are just going off your effort or, or maybe a stopwatch, whatever it is, however you're tracking it. Um, and then you, you hit your 80% and then you, you go to 30 meter decel. So we're not hot, not like a hundred meter sprinter where you're trying to get to max speed as fast as possible and you're holding it for, for a hundred, up to hundred meters. Very different for effort footballs, particularly if you haven't sprinted for a few weeks or in the off season at the moment. Make sure you build up to your speed, you get regular, regular exposure to max velocity and you practice your hard accelerations as well. So in two in two different components at this time of the year, I would, I would recommend, and that's what I certainly do um, when working with my athletes. So we'll have a block where we're working on your first three steps, your 45 degree um, angle from shoulders, hips and, and ankles, um, and making sure we're using our arms and really driving the ground away from us. Where we're, where we're working on our max velocity, it's more vertical that we're focusing on. So good knee lift and then really pushing it into the ground, pushing that ground away. So really focusing on that hamstring um, pull um, where the acceleration work is more hip flexor based. So um, hope that helps break it up, focus on the short stuff like the five, 10, 15 meter efforts and then focus on uh, once a week and then once a week focus on your uh, sprinting, so max velocity based work. Um, where like the flying hundreds is a good example, 30 metres, gradual acceleration over 30 metres, somewhere within the 40, you hit that 80, 85, 90%, and then you gradually come down for a 30 metre decel. So that's a good way to, to do it. And that's a safe way to regularly get exposure. And then as you get more exposure over the weeks, you can start to shorten the acceleration phase. So rather than 30 metres, go to 20 um, and in, increase your um your speed as well that you're moving at. So if you did 85% last the week four, bring it up to 90% the next week. All right, so gradual, progressively overloading your speed exposures are really, really important. And like I mentioned, we're not doing it like three times a week. Just start with one, and then you might be able to do three times every fortnight, two one week, one the following week. All right, so having that as part of your uh, periodized strength conditioning program, really important. The speed day fits in with the gym program and fits in with your aerobic program as well. So you're not going in fatigued, you're not going in super sore from your gym program. Uh, it all fits in together. And, and when I'm do writing my programs, uh, I'm first looking at um, when are we sprinting and then you work around that. So it's really, really important that you sprinting is the highest risk activity that we can do in a controlled setting with your off-season strength and conditioning program. So we're going to make sure we're prioritizing around that. What are we doing the day before? What are we doing the day of? What's your warm-up look like? And all that sort of thing. So I hope that helps. But consistently, if you want to improve your speed, um, Clancy, I would recommend making sure that you're getting regular, regular exposure to sprinting. Um, and sprinting is technically above 90% of your max velocity. So if you can move at nine meters per second, make sure we're getting regular exposure at eight meters per second plus. Hopefully that helps, mate. Jeremy Gorski wrote in, what is your podcast about? Our podcast is all about uh, education, uh, sharing people's stories, those that have worked in high performance or are high performers. So I think AFL coaches, AFL athletes, sports psychologists, strength and conditioning coaches, uh, it doesn't have to be AFL specific from a practitioner point of view. So they've worked in high performance sport, whether it be Olympics, track and you know, with track and field or any event in the Olympics. It could be other sports like um, basketball, soccer. Um, so we, we, we interview experts um, and we share their journey for practitioners that want to work and, and strive to work in elite sport to help them. And also for the developing athletes that tune into our podcast, we make sure there's a lot of practical tips because it's one thing to have the information it's another thing to be able to implement that information. So having these experts that have got the experience, got the knowledge, they'll help um, developing athletes be able to implement the knowledge. And that's really, really, really important. So that's that's 
a basis of our podcast. We host every interview live um, to keep it authentic as well as to keep it dynamic. So if you want to engage in the podcast and send through the guest questions, um, we allow that. So we're open to everyone getting involved to make it a better uh, experience for the listener. So if you are listening to this in podcast world and you um, love the episodes, make sure to subscribe and send through your questions at our next live chat. Um, next question, Fletcher Fraser, how did you get Dylan Shield on the podcast? Uh, we, and I know, Fletcher, you've got your own live show, mate, so keep up the good work. Love what you're doing. Uh, we got Dylan on. I was lucky enough to meet Dylan at the uh, – we have, ball, we have Ball Magnets, which is Tom Mitchell's um, app, and we hosted them at Edge Training where they filmed all their strength conditioning um, exercises. Uh, so mainly around the strength and power work, they filmed that at, our, at the gym there at Edge Training in Paran. So I was lucky enough to meet Dylan um, at, a, at a shoot and um, reached out to see if he wanted to come on the podcast and, and lucky enough to have him on. So... That actually is going to be re- – it's only on our YouTube channel at the moment. We'll release it sh- very shortly, the Dylan Shield podcast episode. Last question, Flynn Peters, what would be the best way to become a powerful player such as Bonson Pelly and Dustin Martin? They break through tackles so well. How can I be more like them? Great question, uh, Flynn. I would start with making sure that you're – um, you've got a, a sound strength and power program. So the work that you're doing in the gym that, that is the best place that you can develop your strength and your power. Then we want to make sure like Bontempelli and Dustin Martin, very good at their ability to fend off other players, create space um, with their power, both in their legs and their upper body. So we want to also be able to transfer that strength that we develop, the capacity work in the gym. So how that's the ceiling stuff. So how, the stronger we get, the higher the ceiling of your strength and your power. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you can transfer that on the field. So practicing combat with through wrestling, boxing type work can really allow you to improve your rotational force. So using your ankles, using your hips and your shoulders to work as one unit um, and transfer that onto the human body that obviously is a lot more chaotic than a, than a barbell. So barbell is very stable, doesn't fight pack. Um, so it's great for max force production, but not so great for um, transferring your your strength that that combat strength on the field that you need to practice that's a skill and i would recommend working with a wrestling coach in the off season or uh, maybe asking your coach at your local club to bring a wrestling coach down from the area to teach the guys how to tackle um and yeah i was lucky enough at hawthorne we had a guy there that was there for a number of years rich and he helped a lot of our academy boys um, with their tackling technique and also how to break space by using their upper body strength so it was very complimentary to the work that i was doing with them in the the gym and i know the players really really loved it and and felt the benefits of it so that would be my recommendation Um, those guys have also no doubt got some genetic um, talent towards helping them with the way that they play so that would help but you can certainly train those qualities so making sure that you're working on your to improve your like to be like dusty and to be like bond to improve your power you've got to train it so following a program that helps with that would be my uh, advice and then also getting a coach who's experienced in improving those qualities um, would be the best way to do it um, which is how you've you've asked the question there that's it for tonight, guys. Uh, remember our live interviews next week are with Tim Parham, head of Adelaide's Rehabilitation, Tuesday night, 8.30 p.m. And then we have Cameron Falloon, the founder uh, and uh, co-CEO of Body Fit Training, Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. Our two podcasts to release it will be with Steve Allen, the West Coast sports physiotherapist, on Tuesday. And on Friday, we have Jared Egan. Um, releasing. All right. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys on the next episode.